Hello students. Hello students. Welcome to this class of uh, BA part first. I am Dr. S. S. Gadwan, Department of English. And today we will discuss the famous poem, Our Casuarina Tree by Torudat. Torudat, as you all know, a uh, very well established English poet and born in 18. 56 and she passed away in 1877 a very short life she barely lived for 21 years and the amount of work she was able to do in her young life is amazing most of her publications were published posthumously in the in her lifetime she published only a few poems and some essays her Noel Blanca appeared in 1878 and her French novel Le Journal de Mademoiselle de Ervers in 1879 and her collection of poems titled Ancient Ballads and Legends of Hindustan appeared in 1882. Critics, they have different opinion about Torudat and the kind of poetry he wrote in English, but the expressive Indian sensibility in her poems is of great value. Like several other Indian poets, Torudat has been placed in the Romantic tradition, and the two poems which are prescribed for your course uh, in BA part first The Lotus, a sonnet in the Petrarchan style, and Our Casurina Tree. They are both the poems of cultural significance and they in a way depict the cultural heritage of India also. This is the cultural heritage that Torudat miss while she is abroad and the poem Our Casuarina Tree echoes the Versworthian and uh, the romantic poets, how they celebrated nature. The same way Torudat, she uses the words like climb, swoon, shingle beach, airy speech, dirge like murmur, images of snow, personifications of fear, hope, death, and time. All these images they help to create an atmosphere. Our Casuarina Tree is a poem of the senses as it forms a cluster of visual images and abounds in oral effects. In its use of consonants like ra and la. Alliterations are usually made of the repetition of the initial consonant sounds of a word, but at times the repetition of consonants within the words may also create the alliterative effect which is very effectively used by uh, Torudat. So let us discuss the poem Our Casuarina Tree. This is a poem by Torudat in which she describes her early childhood days and attitude towards nature. The Casuarina Tree it was a source of joy and liveliness in the poet's life when she was a child. She also remembers how she used to play under its shade in her childhood days and used to watch the birds and other creatures playing under its shade. So, a very nostalgic poem. The tree is a symbol of time and eternity to her. In this poem, the casuarina tree, it is a symbol of time and eternity. And she describes very beautifully how in the early winter mornings when the young poet looked through her window, she used to see a grey monkey sitting on the crescent branch like a statue watching the sunrise. Again, the nature, the depiction of nature, the pleasant morning. While the weak baby monkey jumped about swinging from branch to branch. So, Look at how minutely she has observed and depicted the movement of the baboon 
and the poet he says that how she used to watch the cuckoo welcoming the dawn with a charming song the sleepy cows living for the pastures and the water lilies blooming in the tank as if they as if the snow has gathered so this is all very beautiful imagery the poet has dedicated this poem to the casuarina tree to honor the tree under whose shade she used to play with her sister and brother by composing the poem she pays a homage in the sacred memory of her brother and sister so let us discuss now the poem Torudat, the artist, as I told you before, born in eighteen fifty-six, and she passed away in eighteen seventy-seven. She came from a cultured and educated Bengali family. Both her mother and father were well versed in English. Thus, she got a literary background from the family. She had an eye for the beauty and grandeur of nature. After the death of her younger brother, she, with her elder sister went to europe in 1869 and stayed in england first then france and italy for four years the tour of europe enriched her faculty and paved the way for her to write poetry in english and on the return to india in 1873 and the death of her sister in 1874 greatly affected her and let a deep melancholy strain on her mind which later became an indispensable part of her writing so in each and every piece of her writing we can see the gloominess the melancholy and how sad she felt and feels still after the death of her brother and sister she had an eye for beauty and grandeur of nature like the romantic age poets like wordsworth peets her scene and landscapes are superb she superbly described the landscape and the scenic beauty like wordsworth she was a worshipper of nature we can say she had great fascination for natural objects like trees birds bees uh, fruits and flowers that is the flora and fauna although she converted to christianity but still she had imbibed the ancient spirit and lore of india in this particular poem toruda describes the beauty of casuarina tree its supportive role how it supports the other plants and the natural surroundings the description of the casuarina tree by the poet is so vivid and lively that one feels carried to her house garden in front of the tree the opening line of the poem describes the beauty of a creeper supported by the majestic tree that is why i said that the casuarina tree also plays a supportive role look at the lines like a huge python winding round and round the rugged trunk indented deep with scars up to its very summit near the stars so this is indeed a fascinating image how a creeper is winding around the tree like a python showing the tree wearing the creeper like a scarf the poet she further beautifies the description by describing the branches and the bunches of flowers crimson flowers hanging round the branches of the tree the singing of birds and the humming of the bees further add to the beauty of landscape and add music to the environment so again and again we can see that the poet torudat she is very much fascinated by nature the poet then describes the tree at dawn she displays a remarkable descriptive power in showing the activities on and around the tree during the very early morning she describes the activities on and around the tree her pictorial sketch of the gray monkey sitting on the crescent branch like a statue watching the sunrise while the little one 
leaping about and playing shows the poet's quality of painting the scene. She writes, and I quote, A grey baboon sits statue, like alone, watching the sunrise, while on lower boughs his puny offspring eve about and play. So, the welcoming of the day by the monkey who is watching the sunrise and in the next lines, that welcoming of the day is by the cuckoo, the sleepy cows going to pastures, the blossoming of water lilies in the tank shows the pictorial qualities of the poet. These are all very beautifully depicted and look at these lines and far and near kokilas hail the day. They are welcoming the day and to their pastures went our sleepy cows and in the shadow on the broad tank cast by that whole tree so beautiful and vast the water lilies spring like snow and mast as if the whole water is covered with snowflakes. These lines prove that Torudat was a very keen minute observer of the nature, depicted each and every minute detail. Impressed by these pictorial scenes, one of the critics said, this child of Green Valley of the Ganges will forever remain in the great fellowship of English poets. These are the lines by H. A. L. Fisher. The third stanza of the poem, it shows the poet's attachment, it shows the poet's attachment to the tree. Here she remembers those days of her childhood when she used to play under the shade of the tree with her siblings, her brother and sister. Here the poet describes her playful child memories. Look at these beautiful lines. But not because of its magnificence, dear is the casuina to my soul. Beneath it we have played, though ears may roll, O oh sweet companions. Job, love with love intense, for your sakes shall the tree be ever dear. So here she remember her sweet companions, a brother and sister. And she goes on to point out her dead brother and sister. Now she reveals the cause of her sorrow and her love for the Kazurina tree. Beloved of those who now in blessed sleep, for I repose dearer than life to me alas were they Torudat loved her brother and sister very much and it is they who inspired her to write the poem celebrating the casuarina tree through this poem she wishes to immortalize the casuarina tree and wants to save it from the oblivion's curse like shakespeare, like shakespeare who immortalized the friendship of his patron and friend W.H. in his sonnets. Similarly, Torudat wants to save the tree forever and immortalize the tree and the blessed companions, brother and sister. She writes, And time, the shadow, and though weak the verse, that would thy beauty feign, O oh, fain rehearse, may love defend thee from oblivion's curse. And she says that the tree, so long as nature lives, this tree will be there and she will be remembered for writing such a beautiful poem. She believes that so long as this indo anglian poetry be read, the Kasurina tree will live. The poem is composed in a very simple diction. The poet presents to us a true account of her love for the tree, for her brother and sister, with an undercurrent of melancholy and nostalgia. The use of simile in the very opening line, like a huge python, the monkey sitting like a statue, the water lilies like snow and mass. These are Plenty of similes used, at least signifies the meaning.
and the personifications of time and the tree. Hope and death gives a contrasting effect. The poem is written in an 11 line stanza form and the rhyme scheme is A, B, B, A, C, D, D, C, E, E, E. So, in this very beautiful poem, as we have read, the poet Turudat, she remembers her brother and sister and the childhood memories. It is a memory poem, we can say, and it describes a tree growing outside her window. The sentences are very short and very subtle. The subject of the first sentence is the creeper, which is mentioned only in the fourth line. The creeper holds the rugged tree in its snake-like embrace, as I just told you, like a python, like a huge python. The second stanza, it establishes a connection between the poet and the tree. Passes on to winter and playful family of baboons, then swiftly it moves on to the other images. The third stanza examines the cause of this attachment to the tree. Why the tree was so dear to the poet? Which is not its magnificence but the fact that during childhood, Torudat and her siblings had played under it in a far away land, now when she is far away from the Indian coast, in a far away land, memories of home haunt her. The fourth stanza expands on this and the fifth dedicates this poem to the tree, making, it, making the tree immortal, wishing that the poet's love may save it from being forgotten, from the oblivion's curse. So, if we look at some of the important words like darkling that is the dark kids use the word in o to nightingale and this line it echoes of it then we have another important word casement is a window while at the dawn she was looking out of the casement again it is reminiscent of kids use when he used this phrase this uh, phrase charmed magic casement in O2 Nightingale. Then we have the Borodale is a place in the Lake District of England. The reference to the word uh, to Borodale is to Wordsworth's poems about the yew trees. William Wordsworth, the British Romantic poet, lived in this Lake District and wrote about nature and rural England. The same thing is being done by Torudat, wants to confirm the similar immortality on the Kazurina tree. So, my dear students, I hope you have understood the poem, Our Kazurina Tree, very beautifully depicted by Torudat and how she immortalized the Kazurina tree. Thank you very much.